Welcome to Red 35 and guess who's back by popular demand? Ta -da! It's Zoha of course and today we are going to look at the very popular vintage lens, the Canon 85mm 1.2L and let's see how it goes with an OMD camera. Today we're going to talk about two things. Uh, first of all is a lot of you guys actually asked us uh, how to mount an old lens or any lenses onto an OMD okay. camera or in fact any mirrorless cameras. And second is, yeah, I might as well take this opportunity to show you one of my favorite lenses of all time which is the Canon 85mm 1.2 and in fact this guy has been following me around for a long long time. Really? And I'm not intending to sell it. I'm going to keep it until I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that where you're going to go when you're dead? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take it with me up there, you know? You know, I'm going to take some photographs when I'm up there. I don't think there. you're allowed commercial photography up there. I might be the god photographer. The god of photography up there. Oh, she said that. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Right. Yeah. So, um, um, but this is a really cool lens, I have to say, you uh -huh. know, and it's not made for, uh, I would say, modern digital photography because it is made during the film era at the height of, uh, you know, 80s. 35, yeah, in the 80s, in the 35 millimeters uh, world, so to speak. Um, but you can adapt to it, to any digital cameras via an adapter. So I'm going, today I'm going to take some portrait shoot because this is a portrait lens mm -hmm. with our beautiful Zoha. <laughs> and uh, well, it will showcase how good the lens is in terms of compression, the rendering is very vintage, but very much like what we just did, mm -hmm. you know, with the uh, Camlen 50mm 1.1. Also in black and white. Also in black and white, yeah, yeah. but we're going to take some shot of black and white and color as well today, so uh, let's okay. see how it goes. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite excited to test this lens on Zoha. The depth of field is very shallow, so even if I move a little bit or when you move a little bit, it's out of focus. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about this lens, of course. And uh, like I mentioned, it's a 1980s lens, so it's not built for the modern era. So there will be a lot of, uh, I, would, I would say, optical flaws. Would you call them flaws? Because at in, in today, the time... In today's world, yes. But at the time of manufacturing, it wasn't a flaw. No. Um, let me explain a little bit, because uh, when you shoot at 1.2 mm. or 1.4 even, you know, you can see the glowy thing going yep. on, very similar to what we saw before. Uh -huh. And uh, it's usually a sign of an old design, because what happened is, um, in the old days, uh, when people use fast lenses like this, when it's 1.2, 1.4, these are considering as fast lenses in terms of aperture, so you can absorb a lot more light than usual. Okay. So for that, it's mainly for low light or nighttime photography. So uh, in the old days, uh, we are limited by negatives, you know, and things like that. So you can't really change the, the sensitivity like what we can today with a button in digital. Yeah. And uh, so with the limitation of the film, what happened is lower contrast with that glow thing mm -hmm. going on. It actually enhances low light capabilities, especially in black and white. You can okay. see more detail in, in terms of like black and everything out. You can actually see the detail. So the glow that you see, it actually helps. So they kind of maybe design it that way, so it, it helps photographers to explore a little bit more in terms of low light mm -hmm. capabilities of a camera. Um, but obviously it is totally irrelevant in today's world. You know, you yeah, can, you, you you can press, the, press button the button and that's it, everything changes. Yeah. So uh, this is why it's, uh, yeah, in today's world it's a flaw. But okay. back then, no, it isn't. You know, it's actually part of the characteristics. Yeah. And most photographers, to be quite honest, in the old time, they shoot a 2.8 
3.5, 5.6. It's, it's only nowadays everyone shoot at 1.2, 1.4. They said, I need to blur everything out, you know, yeah. and see the bokeh and things. So the, in the old days, no, that's not the thing. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. How about you think about like blurring thing in the background? What do you think? I quite like it, but like you said, it's more of an olden day touch to it. Yeah. Because of the whole, the globe, it looks very vintage. Um, so I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, in terms of the optical quality, one, you saw that when it stopped down to 2.8, mm. everything just like pinch up. It's just mm. like any modern day lenses. Now. Yeah. So in terms of optical quality... It's very impressive. It's, yeah, for a 1980s lens, this is not bad at all. When were you born? Before that. <laughs> She's young, I'm old, you know. <laughs> don't don't sure say don't that. say that in front of the camera. I'm, I'm shy now. Okay, sorry. Well, I'm gonna go far, very far. This is so close. This lens is always half body, and there, unless I go really, really further back. Like across the street. Yeah, almost. That's a cool pose. Let me just walk around it. That's cool. Speaking of being old, someone someone referred me to be uh, an old guy. I would never. I'm upset. <laughs> anyway. I'll get you ice cream. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that that do work. Yeah, that's that. Matcha ice cream. That oh, that's magic. That's magic. I Remember, you want to cheer me up? Matcha. Anything matcha. Matcha. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about you know, mounting old lenses mm -hmm. on OMD cameras. Well, in fact, all you need is an adapter, which you can pick up relatively cheaply on anywhere, well, uh, eBay, Amazon, so something like this. So it's no more than just basically a piece of spacer in between the lens and the body. Uh, one of the reasons is that because in the olden days, the film cameras, the SLRs especially, they have a much a longer flange distance which means that the back of the lens to the actual film negative mm -hmm. they have a certain distance okay. so in today's world now we have a, well or oh, any mirrorless system without the mirror box body is a lot slimmer compared mm -hmm. to older digital cameras uh, not digital older SLR cameras yeah. and then so to make up the difference you all you need is like a the correct yeah. distance mm -hmm. uh, between the back of the lens to the new digital sensor so that so what is it about basically any adapters uh, would make sure that this is covered mm -hmm. so uh, but you have to get the right adapter of course you know like uh, I was gonna say so it can't just be any adapter no just go with everything that's right yeah because any uh, all different manufacturers have different distances between the lens and the negative so uh, and it has to be the exact same distance yes yes uh, well it kind of but today's I think everyone's getting a little bit lazy so like it's most of the you know, most of the adapters you get these days they always make it just a little bit longer Okay. Just to ensure you can focus to infinity. Okay. I mean that that's the that's why they do it because uh, it's quite hard to nail it exactly because mm -hmm. uh, it will be like very high engineering. You know, like they yeah. will increase the cost a little bit, a lot more. And uh, so like these things are cheap. You know, like that one that you're holding now is probably about ten pound, fifteen pound. Oh, really? The one that I'm using now this uh, for this particular lens is the Photo Deox, and then uh, that's about thirty five pounds. More yeah. expensive because but it looks it. Yeah, it looks nice, isn't it? And that yeah. blue is really cool. But uh, this, no, just because this one's slightly more complicated compared to other other uh, adapter. It's more advanced. It's more advanced, and also because the, the Canon old Canon FD lenses, they require a separate mechanism to operate the aperture. Oh. So that's why they need a, a slightly more complicated adapter. Okay. That's why the cost is slightly more. Slightly more. But it's still, not crazy. No, not crazy. You know, it's only about thirty pound. Like you know, you can yeah. pick one of these old manual lenses relati relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. Not this one though. This is. Quite Quite rare but then like in general not this one this is jimmy's not this, this one this is mine this <laughs> is mine you can't take it away from me unless you beat me to death okay let's stop talking about death jimmy it's okay you can protect me i can i will yeah <laughs> anyway so uh let's talk about the build quality of this thing now yeah okay and uh so being an 80s lens it means only one thing i'll just i just press something i know i heard something <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, uh, so it means it's solidly built. Yeah. It builds like a tank. You felt it earlier. It's Absolutely. super heavy. It's fully metal construction. as not a single piece of plastic apart from that little red dot there. Uh, That's plastic, but but the rest are the rest is completely metal. metal. 
Yeah, so which is a uh, end glass, huge glass. Look at the front element; yeah. it's a massive, massive glass. This is 1.2, of course. Um, so in terms of build quality, I cannot fault it. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, focusing ring, and then uh, it. Being a manual lens, I think I kind of mentioned in the cam lens review that we did, being a manual lens means that it should last you a long, 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 long time. time because there's no electronics, nothing can be broken unless you drop, yeah, it. drop it or do something silly with it. So unlikely it will break, so you can just take it to local camera store mm. if it does have some th problem. Mm. But they're usually minor problem like wear and tears, which is like replacing it's the screws here and there. Yeah, yeah, so they should be fine. So that's, that's why I like manual lenses, uh, but you do lose the convenience of obviously autofocus. You can't do it as quick like earlier, you know, I said, just stay still, stay, there. stay still for like 10 minutes. Yeah. I'll, I'll get the shot eventually. Yeah, just standing there like, freeze to death <laughs> it's really cold today i know you guys can't feel it but so but beer quality nice i, lo I love old lenses that's one of the reasons why four i love old lenses again. four great uh, great 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 <laughs> crazy bulker one more okay right okay that's good oh yeah okay Have you found out where the pigeons are? What? That's not what we were looking for. It, it shows where the squirrels are in the map. There has to be something with pigeons. I love pigeons. As you find out by now, I'm a pigeon guy. <sighs> anyway, shall we talk a little bit about how it handles on a camera? Yes, let's do that. Instead of talking about pigeons. I know she hates pigeons. Very soon to be hating you, but let's go. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, the reason why I use the EM1X as a demo because this particular lens is very heavy. You know, you kind of tried it earlier. It's full of metal, like I mentioned, in the build quality. So when you mount it on a slimmer body like the uh, Pen F or maybe the EM5 series, it will be super front heavy. Mm. But with a huge camera, it balances really well. And it does kind of remind you of the old school kind of. Yeah. Look. That's the first thing I said when I saw you holding that. I yeah, was like, yeah, it's very old school. Very old school. So I think I think it suits the whole kind of balance thing. So you do need a bigger body to kind of counterbalance the front heavy, massive glass elements in the front. Um, so it, it, if you use a bigger like a grip uh, camera, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like the E1 Mark II or the E1X, for instance, and uh, yeah, it's no problem. You do need a big grip though. Uh, so wouldn't recommend if you have a slimmer body, like the entry level cameras or lighter body cameras is definitely definitely mm. no go yeah. uh, i mean it's no no problem you demonstrated how we can do the wrist exercise before exactly if That's you are over that. yeah if you have a very strong wrist not like me Work and then your wrist. yeah then you can definitely use a very very slim and light body to yeah yeah it's no problem you can use but use it's not it's just not ideal with an adapter you can mount to any camera so yeah that's the whole point yes that's the whole point you can mount any lenses on any omd camera via it's correct yeah, the, with the correct adapter. adapter yes that's right assistant Co adapter producer there's so you mount it on there turn it there and you have to turn this ring now i can mount this to the camera just like any cameras there you go all done all done but <laughs> that's cool let's just do one more shot i think i like this angle Right, okay, so you've seen the lens, you've seen the images. Uh, what do you think? I always ask you because you've seen so many images of my output, or, and also you've seen so many photographs of yourself. Yeah. So in terms of look and, uh, yeah, how do you feel about the general aesthetic of the photograph that come off on this lens? Again, like Cam Lam, quite vintage, mm -hmm. but not as vintage, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, yeah. Because, like you said before, it's the blurring the background is more for modern touch yes um so with this one the first few shots that we took were very very blurry at the back yeah can't see anything in the back can't see any you can't even make out where i'm standing <laughs> i didn't like that very much but when you toned it down and it was slightly blurry and then we still had the glow it was really nice yeah the vintage look worked with that so i wouldn't go as far 
So keeping it to an optimum range. Yep, yep. Up the optimum found. blur, yeah. in a way. Yes. A range of blur that was good. Um, I, I liked it. So Photography 101, I mentioned it before, bokeh isn't for everything. You know, in, if you blur everything com completely, like, so blur that you can't even make out where you're standing, yeah. I think that is bad because like, it's just, what's the whole point of just photographing, you might as well stand in a, black wall, a blank wall and just take a photograph of there, yeah, you know, because you can't tell where you are. Yeah, I don't so, like that. No. I like having something in the background. I don't like seeing just me. It's weird. <gasps> really? Yeah, I know you like that, but I don't. <laughs> it's like, okay. oh, it's just my face. But, so anyway, um, I, think, I think you're quite right there. It's, this lens is obviously not old like a 1960, 1920 yeah. lens. It's a 1980 lens. So it's kind of like a, kind of in between. Like, mm -hmm. got a bit of vintage characters in it, but it's kind of modern enough. You can see the modernization coming through. Yeah, so like when you stop down to like 2 and 2.8, you know, you can definitely see the sharpness coming out. It's yeah. more clinical, but still maintaining a little bit of blur there. So this definitely works. Um, I think it's a great portrait lens though, however. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you shoot like a headshot, you know, they can see the compression is very natural, very lovely rendering, I think, in, in terms yeah. of the lens. So that's why I'm keeping it. I'm not selling it. So don't ask me to sell this lens. I'm not going to sell it. Okay. We get it, it's yours, it's yeah, fine. So, so I do like this lens, I think for me, it's a great portrait lens, it's great, um, uh, great now that you can adapt to Olympus cameras mm -hmm. with, via an adapter, so I can reuse the lens. Yeah. Because a lot of these old lenses now, and uh, like the FD mount, this particular mount, uh, Canon doesn't make it anymore, so they don't even have a digital system mm -hmm. that will allow you to use this lens. But you just need an adapter and you can use it now. There you go. So uh, it's very simple, and if you ever really want to use uh, any old lenses, uh, you can just basically go to uh, Amazon to uh, to buy an adapter yeah. just to mount the lens on. Simple yeah. as that. It's it's very pocket friendly. Pocket oh pocket friendly yes. Cheap. Join size. <laughs> but anyway, so yes, I do like this lens. I rate it very highly, and still very highly in 2019. Yeah. And uh, if you mount it in the right system, use it correctly. Yes. You can create great result with these things. Yeah. But you so have, I mean, as long as you do it the right way, you have the right adapter, the right body for it. The right skills, the right man behind the camera and the right person be in front of the camera. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, so you can, you can definitely get, get some good results with these things. Definitely. Yeah, so I, I love it. I do like the 85 millimeters focal length, mm -hmm. although mounted on the Olympi Olympus body is times two. So uh, it's kind of like 170, which is quite far. Yeah. You can see how far I was walking down. Yeah, you had to just, go just trying to do a full, just trying to do a full body shot is just kind of a bit ridiculous, but you adapt to it, I guess. Yeah. So it's not a problem. And also, if you don't want to go that far, you can change the body. Yes, that's true. That's true. But we are Michael Fourth, so we're stuck with that. Not stuck. <laughs> you choose to be with them because you enjoy them. I'm the chosen one. Now the camera's the chosen one, not you. See those guys basically standing where taking photos? That's where I want you to stand. That far. Wow, thank you for tuning in today and watching our video. We were very cold filming it. Uh, but hopefully you're watching it indoors and warm with some hot tea. Soon. And hot chocolate. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe so that we can make better things and nicer things. And tell us what you want to see. Yes. Because we do listen. That's why I'm back. Um, and if not, you... not because you say I love Zoha. <laughs> That's how you bribed me this time. No chocolate. Just look at how many comments we have. You have to come back. Yeah. Um, it worked. So, yeah. Um, leave something interesting down there so that we can make videos even more fun for you. We want to give you what you want. If you don't like the video, definitely leave some constructive feedback so that we can improve them, make them better and keep you coming back for more. Yeah. Okay, someone important. Okay. Also, check out my social links. We put them on my forehead this time because Jimmy wants them on my forehead this time. Yeah. I don't know why. He thinks it's funny. It's not really that funny. I think it's artistic. Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay, um, and don't forget to thumbs up. Yeah, subscribe channel, put a bell notification. Stay tuned for our new videos. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned whenever Zoha appears. We're gonna tag her. Yeah, just just follow us. Just follow, just, us. Just follow us. Just follow us. Let's do it. Yeah. You'll thank us later. Not not physically following us, but follow our channel.
What? There's no one behind us. Fine. Okay. It's fine. Okay, bye. So should I say welcome to Red Thunder Fire and and then uh I can't see her. Yeah. Are we good? Uh yes, today we are going to well no 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 not today. Uh good past behind us. That's good. Let's keep yep. yeah. uh, uh, oh, okay, I'm up. I'm up. I think we should do the whole video here because he's not gonna be like yeah, she's the photographer now. Yeah, you can shoot me. Welcome to my channel, Purple Thirty Five. Zimmy, sh the the the, the Zimmy show. No, no, that's 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 our dance class. Uh, Shimmy <laughs> with Zimmy. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Okay. All you right. get it now. Yes. Okay. Took you long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to Africa again? Maybe. Yeah, she wants to go. I know. Yeah. I know she wants to go. I want to go with her. Both of us might disappear and do a Red 35 video there without you. Yeah. We'll bring Kimi. Yeah, bring Kimi. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I like pigeons. Pigeons are good. What? Never knew it was going to rain. I thought, I thought, I thought London's a um, bird. That's Stop taking pictures of them. Why? They're cool. Look, 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 look at the two of them there. Look at them. They're so cute. Puffed up. Probably nearly dying. Death again. We're not talking about death. Oh, bird. <laughs> How come I'm peace and quiet in London? Stop it. I told you. Why? <laughs> I bet we start. You're going to start making that noise again. You're wasting time. I'm wa am I wasting time? I'm a time waster. Quick! Pigeon. <laughs> 2,000 years later. This is recording. <laughs> food. Warm ourselves up. It's freezing cold here today. Get some soup. She's, she's frozen. Let's get some soup. Frozen number two is coming, by the way. This video is not sponsored by Disney. I love the first one. Mm. I like that song. Let it go, let it go. I'm gonna go. It's like that, yeah? No, it's like. What? I should have some spark coming up. <laughs> Welcome to Red 35, by the way. <laughs> Welcome back. Right? Yeah. Uh, I like the video, and uh, why I'm saying that? I don't know why I'm saying that. I have no idea why I'm saying that. <laughs> Appreciate you. I know. I know. Okay. Can you see me? Thank you for watching the video. But I hope you enjoyed and appreciate all the effort that we've made. And I don't know what he's doing. What are you doing? 